So let's get started. Welcome um, to uh, the last resiliency session uh, for the month of July. We will be meeting tomorrow, um, but this is the last resiliency session. Um, and you know, we we are so deep into the heart of this global transformation that we are in the midst of. We are so in the heart of it. Um, and what that means is that, well, it means many, many things, of course, but um, from the lens of transformation and awakening, which, is, which are two lenses that we are very interested in the work of um, integrative practices, it means that the gates are open. The gates are very, the gates to our heart, the gates to opportunity, uh, to global change, to um, relationship change, to transfiguration at just about absolutely every level. All of the gates are open. Um, and when, when we find ourselves positioned in the threshold, which is where we are, it can be very attractive at the level of the subconscious mind and the level of the substratum behaviors. It can be very attractive and very magnetic to go into old conflict, um, conflict ways of engaging um, with one another, even with yourself, largely this. Um, and engaging from a point of conflict with opportunity as it's arising. So not only um, are the gates open, but the kinds of lessons that are coming up for us to lean into and for us to learn from are a, a very elevated caliber of lesson. You know, they're different lessons than, ha than that have than have ever come up for us before. So we have, well, here we are in the threshold, here we are in the gate of transformation, facing all kinds of new lessons, um, which means the good news of that, um, well, it means that there's a tremendous challenge in our lap and in our heart, but the good news is, is that the quality of upgrades that are available to us um, at absolutely every level are, um, are elite. We have elite upgrades um, coming to us absolutely every day. And so in light of this attractiveness, this stickiness, this, this human tenacity to go into conflict mode, um, to when we find ourselves in a position of facing something new or unfamiliar or challenging, um, we find we find ourselves wanting to blame or shame or project or insulate or, you know, the list is crazy long, right? Um, we want to go into that familiar way of behaving very oftentimes. So as a practitioner, you can counterbalance that um, old habit pattern, that neural network of wanting to, um, the dog just got bit by a fly or tickled by a fly. She just jumped on the floor here. To counterbalance that, we can do uh, a particular kind of practice, right? And so for today, I want to start us off with a Vira Rasa practice. So um, Vira means the way of the warrior. Rasa means the flavor of. So, you know, if we are in any given moment, when we tune in from a place of real sincere naked awareness and we're like, hmm, I am not currently in this moment occupying the flavor of beingness or the flavor of projection that I know I would prefer to be occupying, then you can do a counterbalance practice. So when we find ourselves feeling like we want to lash out at someone or at something, I'm seeing a lot of that this week, all across the board, people having difficult times with people. Um, so if you want to have a more equanimous uh, flavor of awareness and embodiment and projection. Sometimes you have to do a sort of warrior or warrioress type practice to clean up the misunderstandings in your habituations or to clean up the misunderstandings in um, your perception. So we're going to start with a, um, a virarasa practice um, that will help you to become better, a better protector of the nest of your own equanimity. 
we have to know how to protect our equanimity. That equipoise that's on the inside of the inside of our inside um, is, you know, it's a secret space that others don't have access to. And therefore we have complete self-responsibility to tend to that space. And frankly, from my vantage point, one of the finest and fullest and enduringly effective ways of doing just that is to do it through the means of your practice. So as you're engaging in this practice here in a second, really be in the long body, be in, in the long body. In, on Tuesday in our meditation, I was talking about working the, uh, the latitudinal frequencies of your energy and the longitudinal, okay? Um, so in all directions, we've got this uh, multi-dimensional omnidirectionality um, that's going on. So the long body, when we work with the long body, it's not just the molecular body. It's not just the physical substantive thing that we call leg and shoulder and ear, but it's this very malleable, um, very malleable state and experience and expression of your body of self that can be worked locally in this case, right here in my living room now and with all of you on this call. Um, and it can also be sent back into a past situation or a circumstance, and it can be projected forward into a situation or circumstance in a way where we are taking the dream state to affect the dream body. So when we meditate, we're in the negative awareness of this here now moment, but we're also in the state of the dream body, which is a very special kind of um, experience of your body that allows you to grow in very tremendous and beautiful ways. So we're less and less defined by our densities and more and more refined by our crystalline nature, okay? So, welcome. Um, I want to give you the mudra. You're going to use your thumbs to pull down the base segment of your ring finger. So get that feeling. And then have the ring finger and the pinkies tucked in towards the, um, towards the center of the palm. And then wrap the other um, fingers around the thumb. And then you're going to toss the arms back. Imagine that you're physically tossing something back. So you're clearing the way. Okay, and we're gonna do this. I'm gonna change the music so that we have a real Vera Rasa. Again, it's the flavor of the warrior or the warrioress. Um, we'll have the flavor of the Rasa music, the, of the Vera Rasa musically, and then we're gonna breathe in a very Vera Rasa type way as well. So it's in and out of the nostrils. This is Breath of Fire. Many of you already know this. and you're gonna be gazing at the tip of the nose. Your body is going to get uh, pretty hot, pretty fast. And again, you know, when you use all of these different modalities, the whole technology of the meditation then becomes a science for getting beyond conflict, okay? So if you know that you wanna to come to someone or something from some old contracted tense uh, vantage point, you can give yourself the opportunity to do three, five, seven minutes of something like this. This is a fists of anger practice. And you can alchemize your energy so that what you bring is actually your more clear, lucid, um, strong, soft, wild nature, okay? So without further ado, I'm gonna turn on this alternate music. I'm gonna do it with you. And I wanna tell you, you may see me stopping and starting. And if you need to stop and start, by all means do so. But keep up as best you can and stay inside of the dynamism of the meditation as fully as you can because what we bring to the meditation is what we get from it, okay? So bring all of your drive and all of your desire to wake up fully to position yourself in the gates, to receive the opportunity to um, uplink 
the upgrades and the lessons that are here in a really big way right now. So grab the index, or grab the, mid, the ring finger and pull it down. Pull the pinkies down, wrap the index and middle fingers around the thumbs, set the gaze, and then find the breathing and the swinging of the arms. Remember, this is a Vira Rasa practice, so you want to have some intensity, some immensity. Stay in it. Keep the attachment site of where the bottom and the top jaw join as soft as possible. Get into the heart of the rhythm that is the movement with consistency, with repetition, with rhythm. All manner of change becomes available. Stay inside of it. Stay with it, stay with it. You're almost three minutes into the meditation, which means that a lot of different kinds of emotions are probably coming up and revealing themselves to you. Simply notice them, be big enough to hold a tent open that they can all sit inside of you without you reaching to um, change it. Just include it, let it be here with you and let the meditation um, alchemize it. You don't have to do anything, just do the meditation. Let it do you. Squeeze the hands, use the pressurization. Stay in it and really um, adhere to the wisdom of one of Brené Brown's current quotes that are really it's really circulating in a big way right now. And she says, you know, have a strong back and a soft front, and a wild heart. Feel your strong back. Let your front be soft so every time you exhale, it can move, and it can clean out the outmoded perceptions and habits and so forth. Have a strong front, I'm sorry, a soft front, a strong back, and a wild heart that's fully alive, fully, fully alive. Bye.
Close the eyes. Seven minutes of that. And there you are. Here we are. Much more allied. Uh, much more proficiently and effectively and wholeheartedly allied with the frequencies of freedom and fulfillment and flow. Feel how oxygenated you are how open the apertures of your perception is. Another moment or so in just simple metabolic momentology, being in just this moment, not in the memory bank of the past or the projection of future, but just really here now in the nest of your own equanimity, in the nest of your own equipoise with a strong back and a soft front and a wild heart, a live heart. Naked awareness in full acceptance of every emotion that came to you in the intense vira rasa medicine of the fists of anger. It's not about generating anger, it's about transforming it, right? so that we can show up from a place of grace and that we can gracefully emerge from places of tension, whether it's inner tension or whether it's a, a moment of professional tension in the workplace. When we take time to get to know the energy and the essence of Vira Rasa, what happens um, at the level of discernment is that we can become much faster at identifying um, our own demon of doubts, um, we, can, um, we can become much faster at identifying our own inner predator that's trying to maybe hijack our well-being at whatever you know, level it's showing up as. Or we can also identify you know, a projection mechanism coming at us from, a, from another and that we can create a much faster, fluid uh, turnaround of that energy. And so that's why we want to have days where we tune into the Vira Rasa, or we want to at least know that Vira Rasa is in our portfolio. It's in the tool belt, in the repertoire, and when we need it, we can pick it up in the same way that we pick up a hammer. And we can use it, and we can put it back in the belt. Um, and we know that it's there for us um, whenever we may need, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me, moving into a slightly, uh, well, it's definitely a lot more, a lot more um, gentle, the second meditation, okay? Um, so it's going to have to do with a pavana, pavana. You're gonna hear this word 
um, over and over again in the mantra that I'm going to stream in for us to, to meditate with. And so Pavana Guru is acknowledging that every time we inhale, that that in-breath is a most remarkable teacher. There's so much information, so much opportunity for impetus, so many gates opening for insight, so much um, upwelling and blossoming of inspiration simply by breathing in. So every time you breathe in, you're gonna take the arms up all the way on your strong, elongated, latitudinal spine. And then as you exhale, in a really pressurized manner, and so, you know, in Qigong, you, you work with the ball of energy all the time. We're gonna exhale and we're gonna, in a pressurized kind of trembling way, we're gonna bring the force of chi back to its hovering place right out in front of the third chakra, right out in front of the hara and the navel and the heart, okay? So this is the out breath. And then as you exhale, you're gonna squeeze at the pelvic floor, lift the energy up into the ball of the belly, pull it back towards the spine, and then up towards the bottom of the heart. This action of massaging the, the vessel of the inner belly has so much profound effect on um, getting us into the nest of equipoise. Into the nest of equipoise, okay? So it'll be inhale and then exhale. And really squeezing the belly, okay? And lifting it up and pausing after you've lifted your belly up, pausing there so that you can receive, okay? So let me click this song on for us. And again, I'm gonna do the meditation with you. And just like in the last meditation, if you need to, you can stop and start, um, but go right back into it just as soon as you can and as fully as you can. So sitting up nice and straight, like I was saying at the beginning, find your long body the past, present, and future of your energy body, your auric body, your molecular body. Find your long body. And inhale. Looking up beyond the fingers, and then exhale. Bring the arms out to the side and out in front of the body, trembling and pressurizing, moving energy through all the small rivulets of the inner body. Find the hidden waltz. Find the hidden waltz. Now scoop the belly, pull it back, and lift it up. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze at the pelvic floor, lift it to the ball of the belly, pull it back towards the spine, lift it up towards the bottom of the heart, towards the roof of the mouth, towards the crown of the head, and up into the infinite. Inhale. Relax the shoulders, open the heart, wild heart, soft front, strong back, exhale. Terrain of your inner body. Inhale. 
in your physical body with the hands. And then bring both of your hands to your heart and take this moment again in naked awareness to tune into the inextricable solidarity between yourself and the earth. Feel how grounded, how connected to the elements you can be in this moment after 30 short minutes of dynamic meditation, of oxygenating the tissues of your body, of refreshing your perceptions. 
is still at the heart. Feeling your strong back and your soft front and your wild heart. And I'll leave you with the words of Gary Snyder and he said, and I think these words are very relevant for us right now. And he said, stay together to flower and go light. Stay together, learn to flower and go light. So with regards to the art and the science of all expressions of relationship, if we stay together and that's really the glue of our awareness and if we learn to flower and if we go light, so I want to thank you so much for being here today. I hope you feel really good um, and really uh, in touch with the hidden waltz of your own life energy as it's um, flowing inside of you. I hope to see you tomorrow. Um, just a quick reminder about the Integrative Practices website. That's integratives.org. Um, there are so, so, so many replay classes on that website that are there for you. Um, to use on demand the freedom of your own desire to tune into some IP work. Um, thank you so much. I wish you a beautiful day. Satnam. Namaste.